It's October 31st, 2023, and these are your headlines. The Texas House is frozen right now. It appears that they don't have a quorum. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But first, our top story deals with Texas A&M University. As controversies swept Texas A&M last summer over the prospective hiring of a DEI advocate as the, journal, as the university's journalism director, several changes to university leadership followed. Mark Welsh, remember that name, was appointed as the university's interim president following the resignation of former A&M president Catherine Banks. Now, sources have suggested Welsh could be in the running for the permanent position, but... There's some concerning records out there concerning Welsh, especially with his support for DEI. Now, a little bit of history. Catherine Banks, she oversaw the failed hiring of Kathleen McElroy, a diversity, equity, and inclusion proponent. McElroy rejected A&M's final job offer for the position of journalism director after the university watered down her contract following public outcry. Texas A&M then changed McElroy's contract, ultimately settling on a one-year deal as a professor without tenure and a three-year appointment as the director of the journalism program, emphasizing that she could be terminated at any time, much like most jobs, right, outside of academia. Although Banks claimed she wasn't informed of the change of contract, that was later disputed by other university officials. Enter Mark Welsh. Now, Mark Welsh served as the dean of Texas A&M University's Bush School of Government and Public Service from 2016 until this year when he was appointed as interim president. Prior to 2016, he served in the U.S. Air Force as a four-star general and Obama appointee to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. As dean in 2016, Welsh gave a speech on diversity where he advised students to, quote, interview everybody with an open mind and, in my view, ties go to diversity. Welsh also told the audience that as Air Force Chief of Staff, he wanted to, quote, up the number of women in the next class that came into the academy by 8%, from 22% to 30%. And in 2023, his comments are just as, if not more, concerning. He said, I think we've weaponized the acronym DEI. That's what he told the faculty Senate in August. He said, I think McElroy, Dr. McElroy, would have been a great hire for the journalism department. Now, a new state law is set to take effect on January 1st. It was passed by the legislature recently that requires public colleges and universities to disband their DEI departments and dissolve any internal DEI programs for hiring or employee training. However, Welsh said he wouldn't have supported such a law. He said, I don't believe it's beneficial to where we are trying to go long range as a society. Now, just a reminder how things work. Texas A&M, like all public universities in Texas, is overseen by a board of regents who are appointed by Governor Greg Abbott and confirmed by the Texas Senate. Following Welsh assuming the role of interim president, however, he said that the board of regents would not determine faculty hirings. Said they wouldn't have, have any, any role in it and that at the end of the day, he would be the person hiring and firing people essentially saying that the Board of Regents has no oversight, no accountability. That's despite the fact that Chancellor John Sharp has told the faculty Senate that he and the Board of Regents would greatly value their assessment and opinions of Welsh for permanent president of Texas A&M University. So there is a possibility that he could be brought on full-time as the permanent president. They've not set a timeline for when this decision will be made, but the Board of Regents are meeting November 8th through 10th in College Station. The Texas House is at a standstill with just days left in the third special session. As for the second day in a row, the chamber has lacked a quorum. Does this sound familiar? Now, when attendance was taken Tuesday morning, this morning, only 77 of the chamber's 150 members registered as present. 77 out of 150. Now, the chamber's rules require two-thirds, so 100 members, to be present in order to conduct business. Without a quorum, the House is unable to vote on bills or motions or to accept the new wide and special session call from Governor Greg Abbott. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, the absences include a majority of Democrats as well as 20 Republicans, at my count. 
I said this sounded familiar. Maybe you remember just two years ago, Democrats fled the Texas House for Washington, D.C. for 38 days in order to avoid votes on, at that time, it was election integrity legislation. Suggestions that this could be a repeat of that quorum bust and that that could be uh, unfolding were refuted by Democrat State Representative Erin Zwiener in a post on X. She claimed members were not given the usual warning that attendance would be critical and accused Republicans of faking a quorum break because they don't have the votes for school choice. Regardless, with no quorum, the House will reconvene Wednesday tomorrow at 6 p.m. When they do, there will only be six days left in this special session. Lastly, Governor Greg Abbott says he has struck a deal on school choice with House Speaker Dade Phelan and has expanded the special session call. Now, we've talked about how school choice is probably the issue where there is the most daylight not only between the House and the Senate, but the House and the governor, and more broadly, the House and Republican voters. It seemed that this is not something that was going to pass, especially when you have all Democrats opposed to it and a good amount of Republicans. They have consistently blocked any votes on school choice. And so it came as somewhat of a surprise today when the governor's office released a statement saying that he and Speaker Dade Phelan had worked out a compromise. Now, the question is, despite the fact that maybe Speaker Dade Phelan has agreed to this, he doesn't have 150 votes in the House. Ultimately, it's the members that vote on this. We also haven't seen the actual legislation to see what it might contain. But here is what the governor's office says the proposed legislation to expand school, uh, school choice in Texas includes. Universal eligibility for all K-12 through school children in Texas. Voluntary participation, noting that parents, students, and schools choose whether they want to participate. He said students will receive approximately $10,400 per year in their education savings accounts and that it phases out the state of Texas assessments of academic readiness, also known as the STAR test. Students participating in the program will have the option of taking a norm reference test or STAR test to ensure the program includes, uh, achieves good educational outcomes, so there will be some standardized testing, and that the bill will also include billions more in funding for Texas public schools for the biennium, including teacher pay, raises, and school safety. Again, this is the deal that Governor Abbott says he has struck. We have not yet seen exactly what that legislation looks like. We've not also seen whether or not this legislation could pass a committee or even pass a House vote. And again, there'll only be six days left in the special session when they return tomorrow. And that is if there's a quorum. Without a quorum, if members don't show up, if you don't have at least 100 members sitting in their chairs tomorrow when they take attendance, everything gets pushed back. They're not allowed to refer legislation. They're not allowed to schedule committee hearings, etc. We'll be following all this, and you can check out more details on these stories and more at texasscorecard.com. No ads, no paywalls, no government grants, and no corporate masters. Just real news for real Texans. This is Texas Scorecard. 